Today, I will show you a drama, mystery, sci-fi film from 2018, titled Parallel. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. It's a quiet night in the suburbs, and Marissa is in bed looking at some pictures while her husband reads. When their dog starts barking, Marissa goes downstairs to feed him, only to find his dish is still full. She also finds shattered glass on the floor from a broken picture frame, and while looking at the photograph on it, she's ambushed from behind by a masked stranger with a gun. The intruder makes Marissa sit on a chair before putting a pillow on her head and shooting her, then she removes her mask to reveal she's also Marissa. After putting on the dead, Marissa's clothes, she hides the body in the trunk of her car and joins her husband upstairs, who can't tell the difference between the woman now cuddling him and his actual wife. Two years later, Noel and Devon are doing a presentation of their parking app for a tech company. The boss likes what they have to offer, but only gives them a week to finish it, when they had agreed to four weeks, because he's met a different team that can do it in that short amount of time. The guys realize they've been betrayed by Seth, who stole the idea when they tried to hire him and he turned them down because the pay was awful. They go to see him after the meeting, and Noel wants to beat him up for what he did. But Devin stops him before things could get ugly. Meanwhile, at their house, Lena and Josh are hanging out. After lamenting the fact their neighbor Carmen is taken, Josh tells Lena she's a talented artist and she should be doing more than lining pages for apps. Noel and Devon come back then and give them the bad news, so to distract themselves, they decide to go drink at Carmen's bar. While pouring their drinks, Carmen tells them the house they're living in is cursed, because the lady that lived there previously vanished without a trace two years ago and people took a while to notice because she had become a hermit. The group decides to move away from the bad thoughts and drink to forget Carmen teases. Lena for her old relationship with Noel, which was a complete disaster, and Josh tries to hit on a girl but is pushed away by her boyfriend. When they return home, they discuss the possibility of finishing the app in a week, which is impossible. Devin wants to quit and take a position in an actual company, which angers Josh and causes him to throw a tool at a picture of their logo on the wall. The frame falls and reveals the wall is now damaged, but when Lena checks it out, she makes a huge discovery, the wall is fake. The friends tear down the wall and climb the stairs they find behind it, which takes them to an attic they didn't know the house had. The attic is filled with various things, most of them normal, but some stuff makes it all very suspicious. There are pictures of Marissa following her other self around town, two copies of that. Same magazine that have a few differences in the details, a passageway hidden in the closet that takes you to the back of the house, and a special periscope that allows you to look into every room in the house. When Devin accidentally trips, he bumps into a large mirror and as the electricity surges, his hand goes through the looking glass. Shocked but still curious, Lena and Josh put their hands inside as well, causing the electricity to surge every time they do. Devin tries again with a recording phone in his hand this time, and when they watch the video, they discover there's a room exactly like this one on the other side of the mirror. But nobody is in it. Josh crosses the mirror with his whole body next. They cannot hear him from the other side, so he takes the hidden passageway to the back of the house and finds a copy of himself and his friends hanging out. After recording them with his phone, he goes back through the mirror and tells the others what he saw, claiming he was there for 15 minutes, but Devin says for them it was only 5 seconds. They test this out by sending out Josh again and keeping a timer going on their phones. When he returns, they confirm their suspicions, there is a time dilation of 180, which means one minute here equals three hours in the mirror. When they decide to take the mirror downstairs for further investigation, they discover it. Must stay at that angle in that spot of the house or it stops working, which explains why it's bolted to the floor. This doesn't stop them from continuing to experiment with it.
When Noelle and Josh enter the mirror one after the other, they end up in different attics. But when they cross holding hands, they arrive at the same spot. Noelle reaches the conclusion that the mirror takes them to parallel universes, and every time they enter it, they're visiting a new timeline, but it always takes them back to their original reality. This explains the periscope, it is there for travelers to check on their other selves and avoid crossing paths with them. Now they know how the mirror works, the group agrees to use it for their benefit by working. In one of the parallel universes with its slower time, they managed to finish the app. Even earlier than the company had asked them to. After handing in their work, the friends drive by Seth's house to make fun of him for trying to steal their opportunity, then they go to Carmen's bar to celebrate. There, they realize the mirror gives them the opportunity to go even bigger if they use it right. Josh's first idea is to learn the lottery numbers in advance, but it doesn't work because these alternate realities or outs, as they start to call them, have some minor differences in them. Noel points out these differences are what they need to take advantage of, so the group starts jumping from universe to universe, trying to find some information they can use. Sadly, they don't find anything interesting, maps, history, and news are all the same. Their next plan is much simpler, they start taking their outs money and expend it on all kinds of luxuries. One evening, Lena is going through Marissa's diaries, which she's found in the attic. Marissa moved to this house after her husband passed and also found the mirror by accident. At first, she was obsessed with following herself around, but then she realized that people that are dead in this world could alive in others, so she went on a quest to find a version of her husband that was still alive. Lena calls it romantic, but the concept upsets Devin. Meanwhile, Noel and Josh are in a different reality, recreating a scene from The Godfather. After blowing up a pile of cash while wearing costumes, they want to test out a new gun they recently acquired. While looking for things to use a target, they discover a weird DVD, it's a version of Frankenstein with Ryan Gosling and Emma Stone. When they go back home, they discuss this finding with the others and realize this is what they needed, decisions involving artistic inspiration have higher variation between realities. Now they know what to look for, they go into an alt and easily find a variety of differences like Mona Lisa's hair being short. Noelle wants to bring all these new ideas to their world and make a profit, but Devin disapproves. Because it would be stealing another person's work, which is what Seth did to them. After arguing with his friends, he leaves their table and goes to a computer to search for information about his father, but the resulting article is the same he would have gotten at home when he was found guilty of carrying on a corrupted business, Martin killed himself not to go to jail. Unlike Devon, the others do start to take advantage of the mirror. Josh is merely impressing girls by predicting the future, but Lena is copying great works of art and selling them as their own, and Noel is bringing and reselling technology. Both of them become incredibly wealthy and successful, earning them appearances on magazine covers and TV shows. One day, while enjoying a party, they're approached by Seth, who is very suspicious of this sudden success and mentions something called the Orion Sky Fund, but Noel kicks him out after he insults Devon's father. Later, after the party, Devon asks Noel about this Orion Sky Fund thing, but he doesn't explain much and promises he won't do anything crazy without checking with him first. Afterward, Noel takes Devon with him to another reality to take care of something. They go to a different Seth's house and Noel destroys the computer and the television before grabbing Seth himself and throwing him on the ground, inviting Devon to kick him for what their Seth said about his dad. Devon refuses and makes them leave, scolding Noel for such violent acts, but Noel doesn't. Consider Alt's real people. Devon starts reading Marissa's journals and notices she lost her mind, and he worries. It may be happening to Noel as well. To distract him from all this worry, Josh takes him with him to hang out in another world, where Carmen does accept his flirting because he can impress her with her favorite band's music from the future.
When it's obvious that they're about to sleep together, Devin decides to give them some privacy and goes downstairs to search for his dad again, but the results are the same. Because he is listening to music on headphones to block the noises coming from Josh's room, he doesn't hear Carmen's boyfriend park outside and enter the house until it's too late, the man shoots Josh for sleeping with his girlfriend. The gunshot is heard by Devin, who wastes no time and takes Josh back to their world. While Lena helps him bandage the injury, they ask Noel to call 911, but he only pretends to do so, and after a short moment passes with them not being able to do anything, Josh dies. After covering the body with a blanket, the three of them argue about what to do next. Devin wants to call the police, but Noel refuses because they cannot explain where the bullet came from. He thinks they should kidnap a Josh from another reality and bring him here to replace the dead one, a plan Devin disagrees with, but Lena accepts after some hesitation. The trio takes the body to an alt and after saying their goodbyes to him, they approach the other Josh while he sleeps and use chloroform to knock him out and bring him back with them. When he wakes up in the morning, Josh finds his friends putting all their things in boxes. Noel and Lena start telling him the story they had agreed on, Josh got drunk and doesn't remember them selling their project to a big company. Josh also got a developer position at Stanley Tech after his friends sent their work to them, which is the kind of company Josh has always wanted to work for. Josh is too happy about his dream coming true to doubt the story and moves out of the house to start his new job. While Noel and Lena continue to bring ideas from other worlds and Devin keeps on searching for a reality where his father is alive, Josh is feeling rather stressed at his new job. One of his co-workers checks on him and says she wouldn't want him to end like the last guy in that position who had a mental breakdown after some videos of himself that he didn't make appeared online. Josh's unsettling feeling starts to get worse when he looks at his old pictures on social media and discovers many things are different from what he remembers. In one of his many trips, Noel almost bumps into his other self and must think of something to get out of this situation. Meanwhile, Devin and Lena are having a chat. Lena knows Devin is looking for his dad, and he confesses he wants to talk to him because in this world, the last thing he told him before he killed himself was a bunch of insults for bringing the family a bad reputation. Sometime later, after Lena finds Noel spying on Devin through the periscope, he shows her the latest invention he's stolen from an alt, the effluvium, a contraption that expands matter at the molecular level, so for example, water becomes gas. He also tells her that unlike Devin, she understands what it's like to dream big. Meanwhile, Devin finally finds a world where his father is alive, in this alt, a housekeeper found him after he took the pills and saved him just in time. Devin goes to visit him in prison and tries to apologize for what he said, but Martin wishes he had said it earlier because he didn't see the damage he was causing to his family. After a deep, emotional talk with Martin, Devin goes back to his world and asks Noel to have a drink together. They reminiscence about the old days before discussing the Josh issue, and Noel tells him the Orion Sky Fund is sending money to Josh's family every month without him knowing, which helps placate Devin. Afterward, he goes to Lena's art show, where he finds her getting drunk because she's being haunted by her guilt. She admits to being a fraud and asks one of the visitors to offer his opinion on the only art piece she did herself, which nobody is looking at. Since she's starting to make a scene, Devin drags her out and takes her home. In her room, Devin admits that he's always liked her old work and that he even went to her first show, taking out her old flyer from his wallet to prove it. He also confesses he almost made a move back then, but Noel got to her first. Touched by all these revelations, Lena kisses him and they make love. After they are done, they discuss Noel's situation, who seems to be working 24-7 while somehow never getting tired. Devin tells her he's found out through the journals that Marissa made a plan to change places with one of her outs, and Lena promises she'll talk to him, unaware that Noel is spying on them through the periscope. 
The next morning, Lena wakes up to find Devon gone and a note on the bed saying he's left. Because he can't be part of this right now, so he'll come back when he's ready. When he doesn't pick up his phone either, she tries to talk to Noel about it, but he doesn't care, claiming Devon will just come back in a couple of weeks. Then he makes a move on Lena, telling her he'd want them to get back together and try again, but Lena turns him down. Their conversation is interrupted by a call from Josh, who asks Lena to meet him at a cafe. Josh looks pale and stressed when Lena finds him. He tells her he doesn't find things where he put them, and Lena says it's the stress of being in a new job, which causes Josh to snap. Everyone keeps telling him that, but he's never had job problems like this before, besides. He's found other weird things, like photographs and books from his childhood having different details from what he remembers. There's also a pistol in his backpack that he never bought and constant pain in his stomach. He can never shake the feeling something is off. When Lena returns home and finds Noel putting an electric lock on the door, she tells him everything Josh said, including the story of the meltdown that the guy before him went through. Noel admits he did that to get Josh the job, which angers Lena because this has crossed a line. Now that she's suspicious of him, Lena spies on Noel through the periscope and sees him throw a phone in the trash. She retrieves it and connects it to her computer to find the phone's recent locations, which takes her to a lake house in the countryside where Devon is now living. Lena discovers he'll soon be leaving the country to escape a lawsuit from Seth that Noel made up. When Devon shows no signs of remembering their night together, Lena realizes this is an Alta Noel has killed this world's Devon. She tries to explain things to him, even showing her old art show flyer as proof, but she leaves. When she doesn't get an answer from him, not noticing this Devon is opening his wallet and finding the flyer there as well. Meanwhile, Josh discovers from a private investigator that Noel lied about selling their project and is now filing patents, so he goes back to the house to talk to him. He finds him in the attic, coming out from the mirror, and confronts him by threatening him with his gun. Josh orders Noel to unhook the mirror so he can take it with him, and comes closer to give him a tool to do so. When he's distracted by touching the glass, Noel jumps on him and throws him on the floor, where they struggle until the gun is accidentally shot. Noel pulls away from Josh, bleeding, and Josh tells him he'll help him, but he's distracted by the electricity surging. A new Noel has come out of the mirror and using a futuristic gun, he kills both Josh and his copy. Lena arrives then, seeing what he's done, but Noel only cares about the big picture. He takes Lena to see all the amazing inventions he's brought from else and tells her this isn't about money, it's about becoming the Edison of their time. He's also been confessing his love to a bunch of different Lenas, but he thinks none of them can compare to the original. Lena pretends to be into him again to distract him with a kiss and push him onto the bed. So she can steal the gun, but the doorbell interrupts them and Noel takes the gun with him when he goes to see who it is. The person at the door is Carmen, so after seeing her through the window, Noel ignores her and goes back upstairs, where Lena jumps on him and stabs his leg with the effluvium. After struggling on the floor, Noel overpowers her and recovers his gun, but he can't bring himself to kill the woman he loves. When he comes closer to try to change her mind, Lena pushes him off and takes the chance to steal his gun, but when she presses the trigger, nothing happens because it works. With fingerprint recognition, Lena runs out of the room and tries to escape the house, but she can't open the electric lock Noel installed. So instead, she tries to leave through the mirror, but Noel finds her and drags her back by her hair. As he grabs her to stop her from leaving, Devin shows up, carrying a gun of his own, and shoots Noel when Lena manages to free herself from his hold. Noel falls inside the mirror, so to stop him from coming back, Lena changes its position to stop it from working. The mirror comes to stop at the same time Noel is in the middle of coming back, so half of his body falls on the floor, showing his bloody guts. 
After getting rid of the body, Lena wonders how Devon has found the truth, and he responds. By showing her a video, his other self recorded with a message, in case this would happen. They decide the mirror is too dangerous to use, so Lena destroys it with an axe before. The two of them move out of the house for good. Days later, the couple is driving through the countryside while listening to the news. On the radio, which talks about the technological inventions that were donated by an anonymous person. When they stop at a gas station, Lena goes to the bathroom and, while looking at herself in the mirror, she notices an electricity surge behind her. Soon afterward, Lena returns to the car and is surprised to hear a band she hasn't listened to in a long time, which Devon finds weird because they played their songs an hour ago. Lena merely blames it on spacing out and the couple happily drives away together.